In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Monica Rambeau is relatively new. She's the daughter of Maria Rambeau, Captain Marvel's friend and fellow pilot who used the call sign Photon. Monica was played by Akira Akbar in Captain Marvel and by Theona Paris in the Disney Plus WandaVision series. In comic books, though, she's not new. In fact, her story dates back nearly 40 years and covers her time on many famous teams, even as she rotated through a handful of superhero names. This is the story of Monica Rambeau. Let's talk about her. First, thanks for watching JLS Comics. If you do like the video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I upload videos just like this every single week. Let's jump right into our story. In February of 1982, Marvel Comics published Jim Starlin's Death of Captain Marvel graphic novel. It was an instant classic, much revered, and a story that proved the literary viability of comic books, that they could be deeper and adult and about much more than just who can punch harder. The flip side of that story is that it suddenly created a problem for Marvel Comics. Legal battles dating back to the 1940s over Shazam and the Captain Marvel moniker had been waged between Fawcett, DC Comics, and Marvel Comics. Ultimately, Marvel got the trademark for the name Captain Marvel in 1967, and now, with their Captain Marvel dead, they would need to do something to retain that trademark. Enter Roger Stern. Writer Roger Stern is the one who said that he could fill this gap for Marvel. And Roger's wife is the one who told him that the name Captain Marvel is gender neutral. It could be either. So he said about creating a character that would break some of the norms and cliches of the time, he decided to make her a black female. And when John Romita Jr. came onto the project as the artist, Romita wanted to model Monica on Pam Greer, a famous actress known for films like Foxy Brown, Coffee, and Black Mama, White Mama. Her look was changed though before her debut in the pages of Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number. 16. Monica was born in New Orleans, Louisiana. Stern gave her the last name Rambo to suggest the French influence of her birthplace, but he wanted something French, but something that people could pronounce. Her mother Maria was a successful seamstress, and her father Frank was a firefighter with NOFD. The Rambo family were close, full of love and pride and gumbo. Following in her parents' footsteps of public service, Monica joined the New Orleans Police Department and joined their harbor patrol, earning the rank of lieutenant. However, she would be turned down for captain. One day while off duty, an old family friend named Professor Andre Leclerc, Leclerc came to Monica for help. Leclerc had developed a powerful energy device that accessed extra-dimensional energies, and he did this with help from a South American dictator named Ernesto Ramirez. Ernesto, however, tapped an evil scientist named Felipe to make an evil prototype based on Leclerc's design. And so Felipe built this new device on Roxon Oil Tower number 25 in the Gulf of Mexico, which of course is right off of Louisiana. And so when Leclerc came to Monica for help, it was to destroy Felipe's prototype. At the oil rig, Monica smashed the silicon grid on the machine with her fist and she was bombarded with the energy from Felipe's weapon and her body was imbued with massive amounts of energy that she would soon find out she could manipulate, modulate, and even mitigate at will. The professor later told her that she could change into any form of electromagnetic energy to become sentient radio waves, light waves, or even electricity and he said she could pass through solid objects and travel at light speed and she could even shoot energy blasts out of her hands. When the device exploded, it threw her body back to shore and dazed and confused at first, Monica was able to gather up some elements of different Mardi Gras costumes from a storage warehouse, and that's how she came up with her first white and black costume. In the New Orleans Times newspaper, a report said that the U.S. Navy got to the destroyed oil rig and found a soldier saying, the captain is a marvel, over and over again. And so the paper asked, who is Captain Marvel? And that's how she got her name. Well, she also got that rank that she wanted, too. Now she was a captain. Monica ended up leaving Harbor Patrol to become a hero and an adventurer. After this, Monica traveled from New Orleans to New York City. She wanted to find Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four, who she thought could help her control her rapidly growing powers. And in the city, Monica passed by Peter Parker at the Port Authority bus terminal, and she set off Peter's spider sense. She's stunning, Peter thought to himself. He decided to keep an eye on her. Peter then followed her to the Baxter building, where Monica ran into the thing, and later to Avengers Mansion, where her energy discharge injured Iron Man. Monica asked the Avengers for help, and Iron Man wrapped her in coils while Spider-Man covered her in webbing to help her discharge her energy safely. And so the Avengers ended up accepting her into their ranks, but as a trainee. She then joined her new team to help Smart Hulk in space to defeat the leader. She even dons a clear helmet and a jetpack to fly out into the void of space. And a bunch of the leader's humanoids tackled her, but a burst of her energy took care of them. And she had to wait to get back to the ship to return to her human form since the humanoids had crushed her helmet. Then, finally, Monica got full membership to the Avengers team. On her first day as a full-fledged member, she helped them rescue the president, while Star Fox showed up as the latest trainee. She then helped defeat a villain named Plant Man. 
She ran into a mysterious force field and the team worked to try to penetrate it, which happened to be projected by a Niles no-field generator. Meanwhile, the Fantastic Four were trapped in the negative zone to fight with a Nihilus. Eventually, Captain Marvel was able to penetrate the force field, and when she showed up on the other side, it affected a Nihilus negative field generator due to her energy, and the machine blew up in a Nihilus's face, but it also got the Fantastic Four and their building back to where they were, and the Thing introduced her to the team as the new Captain Marvel. Exhausted as Scarlet Witch and Vision in a life support capsule returned to Avengers Mansion, Monica returned to her New Orleans flat. It was a split second away at light speed, she noted, but she flew back when She-Hulk asked her for help, cheering up Wanda. In Doctor Strange's title, Monica teamed up with Scarlet Witch and Strange to fight against the Lord of Vampires, Dracula. Monica and the Avengers were then called by the United Nations to go on a fact-finding mission to the moon to determine if they should enter a treaty or not with Black Bolt and the Inhumans who resided in their moon city of Adelan. In Avengers 2 36, CM helped Spider-Man and the Avengers take on the Lava Man who had invaded Project Pegasus and they kept calling her the Lady of Light. The breakout though allowed Electro, Rhino, Moonstone, and Blackout to escape confinement from Project Pegasus and Blackout was able to trap Captain Marvel briefly in a dark sphere. The villains took the control rods of a nuclear reactor and to prevent a meltdown, Captain Marvel was able to turn into her energy form and fly into the core of the reactor and was able to get it to shut down without it melting down. It worked although it allowed Moonstone and Blackout out to escape. She then helped Doctor Strange, Tiger, and the team defeat Morgan Le Fay and bring Jessica Drew's Spider-Woman back from the astral plane. When a mysterious construct appeared in Central Park in New York City, Monica and the Avengers showed up to investigate and they were all transported away for Secret Wars. Monica spoke the very first words that opened the Secret Wars event. Oh my stars, she declared. Later, Monica was relaxing in a hot tub on Battleworld when the villains attacked and she ended up getting knocked out by Doctor Octopus. And when Molecule Man dropped a mountain range on the heroes, Captain Marvel used her energy like a flashlight to light their small chamber. And in that chamber, Reed ended up hooking up Johnny Storm and Monica to Iron Man, and they channeled all of their energy into Iron Man, who was able to blast away the side of the mountain to free them all. And in one funny scene during Secret Wars, Iron Man called her Babe, and she said, You call me Captain Marvel instead of Babe, and I'll call you Iron Man instead of Bozo. Captain Marvel and the Avengers eventually returned to Earth from Battleworld, which was depicted in Amazing Spider-Man issue 252. In in Avengers 246, Monica went to her parents' house and revealed to them that she not only had powers, but she was an Avenger, and she told them this over a plate of her father's gumbo. And this was quickly followed by a fight with Dr. Paulson as she teamed up with Spider-Man and Star Fox. And this battle ended up with her not being able to change back to her human form, so she was, for a time, stuck as pure energy. And as energy, she could change into the different types of energy that I mentioned before. So in a battle with the Hulk, Captain Marvel converted to gamma energy and actually flew through the Hulk. Later, Vision had CM fly out at light speed to the edge of the solar system, and there she found Thanos' spaceship, the Sanctuary 2. She was able to defeat the ship's defenses by changing from light waves to radio waves and then constantly shifting her frequency. She thought the ship was empty, but these aliens took her captive and the ship quickly jumped into deep space with her as a prisoner. And it turns out that the aliens were working for the space pirate Nebula. Nebula kept Monica with them for their fight against the Skrulls. Captain Marvel ended up sneaking onto a Skrull ship and was able to get a message back to the Milky Way and the Avengers just before Nebula blew up the Skrull ship. So the Avengers took a space Quinjet along with a Herald of Galactus named Fire Lord up to save her. And then back on Earth, she helped her dad save someone from a fire, then went to her mom's sewing store to change into her civvies and spend time with them. So she got a little bit of downtime after her space journey, and just before the Avengers fought a cosmic being responsible for Secret Wars named The Beyonder for, well, Secret Wars 2. Later, Monica helped the Avengers take on the time-traveling villain Kang the Conqueror. By Avengers 278, Monica had been with the Avengers for quite a few years now, and so when Wasp stepped down as team leader, Captain America said that she should take Wasp's place. And Monica was unsure at first about this, so she went back to her parents because they are very close and she wanted their advice and both of them were on board with this so she said yes she became Avengers team leader this is also around the time that she ran into Moonstone and Blackout again who had now joined up with a supervillain team called Masters of Evil that was run by Baron Zemo and the Masters of Evil overran the Avengers mansion and during this attack Monica was trapped in the Dark Force dimension but the Shroud helped her come back and retake Avengers mansion from Zemo's team in a miniseries called X-Men vs Avengers it was Captain Marvel who showed up as a hologram to declare Magneto 
under arrest on orders from the United Nations, although both the X-Men and the Soviet super soldiers showed up to claim custody of Magneto. During the follow-up to Contest of Champions, Captain Marvel and the East Coast Avengers had to die, and were forced to fight the West Coast team in a cosmic battle involving Death, Benicio Del Toro, the Collector, and another elder of the universe named Jeff Goldblum. Well, he's really the Grandmaster. So Captain Marvel ended up dueling with Iron Man, and she tried to overload Stark's armor with energy, but he absorbed it and then shot it back at her, which knocked her out cold, and she was back to her human form. And then Monica then later led the team in a fight with another villain named Super Adaptoid. And just after this, in a battle with a sea monster that had once been Namor's wife, Marina Smallwood, Monica again transformed to pure energy. And during the battle, when she hit the water, her energy form dissipated, though she wasn't dead. She managed to pull her energy back together, but now she was vastly depowered. And due to this and the mental influence from Dr. Druid, Monica ended up stepping down as the Avengers team leader, and she retired from active duty with the team itself, although she did stay on as a reserve member that could be called up for exceptional needs. In 1989, Captain Marvel got her own self-titled book. It was an action-packed issue where she fought a crime lord from Brazil named Christina Ramos, who had employed Powder Keg and a lady who keeps popping up in her story, Moonstone. Monica still didn't have her powers back, and with Ramos in the guardsman armor, it was a tough battle for her. But luckily, James Rhodes, War Machine, had showed up to give her a Stark Industries neutralizing device that she was able to use to knock Ramos out. So, she was able to win without using energy powers. The Avengers had to call on Monica and her reserve status when the forces of Atuma and Gower attacked the surface world during an appropriately named story called Atlantis Attacks. She was then quickly called up again during the Terminus Factor. Monica was then out in space with Quasar and a bunch of Marvel speedsters like Black Racer, Wizard, Makari, Speed Demon, Quicksilver, and others as they were challenged by the Runner to a big race. After the Avengers team was reorganized, Monica was picked to chair a reserve substitute team that was backed by the United Nations, and this team was Black Knight, Hercules, Spider-Man, Sandman, and Rage. Captain America assigned Monica to the delegation that went to the Shi'ar Imperium during the Operation Galactic Storm, and their task was to plead with Majestrix Lalandra, head of the Shi'ar Empire, to try to get them to keep the Kree Shi'ar War away from planet Earth. And later, a group of aliens wanted to take the moon, so Quasar recruited Captain Marvel along with other powerful people like Black Bolt, Hyperion, and Icarus to stop them. And it was during this adventure when Monica started getting her powers back after what had happened to her in the sea monster fight. And she also ran into a Quasar clone who was the 1950s era Marvel Boy, and the two fought, with Marvel Boy trying to use Monica's Avengers ID card to call the Avengers, but it wouldn't work. And later, it was an alien named the Stranger who finally helped her get charged back up to her full power again. In Avengers Unplugged issue 5, the repowered up Monica met Genus Vell, the son of the original Captain Marvel, as they battled the cosmic being named the Collector. And this ended with Genus taking the name Captain Marvel while Monica became Photon. When sorceress Morgan Le Fay used her reality distortion wave, Photon temporarily went by the name Daystar. And then in a miniseries called Avengers Infinity, Monica was with her dad on his new boat called the Jolly Roger, and she also found out that her mom had been hiding her Avengers ID card, so she was upset about this. Her mom was upset because her dad had just gotten out of firefighting, which was really risky, and she didn't want Monica going back out there and risking herself. But Quasar ended up calling for help, so she had to go up, even as her mom teared up. So Monica flew up to Moondragon's spaceship to meet Thor, Quasar, Star Fox, Tigra, and Jack of Hearts. Another trip, they stopped at a space bar, and Photon was playing video games with Quasar. Their goal was again to meet with Lalandra. They were there to find out why she turned Earth and the Soul System into a maximum security prison. After their audience with her, they were attacked and kidnapped by the Rule who it turns out were working for the Kree's supreme intelligence. They made it back to Earth, and Jarvis made Monica a nice cup of coffee, while Jack of Hearts wolfed down a bunch of cheeseburgers. She then went to Slorania with the team to fight Bloodwraith, a villain who was able to take down both Wonder Man and Photon with his energy blade. After this, she went into space to help Quasar with his remote monitoring stations, and since she could travel with no mass at light speed, she said she would commute there from New Orleans instead of staying up there like the rest of the team. And while out there, she reconned Kang's spaceship called Dan Damocles base just before the Kang Dynasty Kang War event. Photon and Jack of Hearts flew out of the ship into space for the attack on Kang's base, but in an explosion they were knocked out and floating in space until Quasar and Living Lightning showed up to save them. When Marvel Comics and DC Comics teamed up for a crossover called JLA Avengers, Monica ended up fighting with DC Comics Green Lantern. Then she teamed up with Marvel and Shazam, three Captain Marvels, to fight with the villain Krona. Later, Monica was on her boat at a dock in New Orleans when she heard on the radio that someone using her name Photon took out Batrock and his brigade. And this turned out to again be Genus Vell, and she was pissed at him, so she flew up to confront him. And she didn't want to be Captain Marvel, so he suggested names like Photon with an F, Sunwind, Phase, Pole Star, Pole Dancer, before settling on the name Pulsar for herself. 
Then in Reggie Hudlin's Black Panther title, which was part of Marvel Knights, Monica teamed up with Brother Voodoo, Black Knight, Luke Cage, and Blade, and they headed to New Orleans to fight a vampire outbreak in Monica's old hometown. And then in 2006's Next Wave by Warren Ellis, Monica decided to stop calling herself Pulsar and just went by her government name. Here she joined the Next Wave squad as an agent of hate along with Elsa Bloodstone, Machine Man, Boom Boom, and The Captain. Then in 2009, Monica starred alongside Firestar, Black Cat, and Hellcat in a miniseries called Marvel Divas. This team went to hell to rescue Hellcat from her old flame and former husband, the son of Satan, Hellstorm. They were aided by Brother Voodoo, whom Monica had a fling with, and this team up let them rekindle their flame. She also went to a Las Vegas birthday party for Emma Frost and ended up hanging out with Frankie Ray. And she was then seen in a book called Journey into Mystery, where she was on the Avengers monitoring station with Iron Man fighting some aliens. And then in 2013, for a book called Mighty Avengers, Monica joined the new team and took on the name Spectrum, and even became a field commander for the Mighty Avengers. Now instead of Brother Voodoo, Monica started to catch feelings for a hero named Blue Marvel. When Monica was injured during an attack by the children of Thanos, the Black Order, specifically the Spear of Proxima Midnight, it was Blue Marvel who healed her, and she was smitten ever since. Speaking of Blue Marvel, Monica and Jen Walters, aka She-Hulk, teamed up to take down Blue Marvel's son Max Brashear, who turned to the dark side and had taken on the name Dr. Positron. She then led the Mighty Avengers charge against the Death Walkers to rescue Blade and save humanity. And as that title ended, the story moved to Captain America and the Mighty Avengers, and in that story, both Sam Wilson, Captain America, and Hologram Iron Man agreed that Spectrum was an alpha level threat. In issue 6 of the series, Spectrum calls herself Auntie Monica. This was in the lead up to Secret Wars when cosmic incursions were smashing Earths together, killing trillions and ending entire universes. Monica's the one who came up with the idea to, to destroy Earth 1610, the ultimate universe, which was going to impact Earth 616, the main Marvel universe. And she paused for a moment because she saw some kids there, and that's when Ultimate Universe Reed Richards captured her. And those were the last days before Doctor Doom became God Emperor Doom on the Secret Wars Patrick Planet Battleworld. In 2016, in the wake of Secret Wars, a new team was formed to take on existential threats and, and risks to planet Earth. So to honor the ending of Earth 1610 Ultimate Universe, this new team was called the Ultimates. Carol Danvers took the idea to Black Panther who said okay, and Black Panther said let's recruit Blue Marvel. And when Blue Marvel came on because of their history, he suggested that Spectrum join the new team. And so, with the Mighty Avengers team now dissolved, Monica joined the Ultimates. And together they worked with Galactus as he converted from Planet Eater to Lifebringer. The Ultimates also teamed up with White Fox during a new contest of champions as the Grandmaster fought to oppose the Collector once more. During the second superhero civil war as heroes split and factions formed over the use of Ulysses' future sight power, Spectrum and the Ultimates joined Carol Danvers' side of the conflict. And after the second civil war, the Ultimates team was disbanded, but Monica and the team continued to meet up because Galactus still needed their help. Later, the Ultimates were combined with Alpha Flight on their Alpha Flight space station to protect Earth. And this happened just as Steve Rogers revealed himself to be working with Hydra, who lured the heroes of Earth into space and then locked them out by turning on the planetary defense shield so he could take over the planet. Yep, that was Secret Empire. And in a series called Avengers No Road Home, Voyager teamed Spectrum up with Vision who needed to stop Nyx as the sun was being blacked out. Monica used up vast amounts of her power to keep Vision active and to stop Nyx. And they won, but Monica lost her powers for a brief amount of time. And in the wake of War of the Realms, Blade then recruited Monica along with Angela, Wiccan, Spider-Woman, Winter Soldier, Hellstrom, and they went to King Deadpool Pool's Monster Island and were fighting the Verdai. She was also part of the combined Avengers Kree and Skrull Force that stood against the Kotati during Empire and ordered them to stand down. Most recently during the King in Black event when Null invaded Earth, Spectrum appeared with symbiote Spider-Man and Kang on Rocket's spaceship trying to figure out what to do even after Dane Whitman, the Black Knight, regained consciousness. A Clintar named Mr. E had stolen Black Knight's ebony sword and had taken it to nowhere for it to be destroyed by Uluk the Troll's sister and so Spectrum and the team went there to stop him and end up fighting with Uluk. And for March 2021's issue 5, she's right on the cover, seemingly defeated, but she will surely rise again to help defeat Null and save the world. By then, we'll also know more about her Geraldine, Monica, WandaVision story as well. Until then, that's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.